Today's lesson is on speed, velocity, and the difference between them. Now, before we can talk about how fast something is going, we need to make sure that we have an understanding about how we know something is moving. And the way that we know something is moving is because it, the object changes position compared to a reference point. So a reference point is just whatever thing you're using to compare something to. So if we look in maybe this little video down here of the cat, and you see the cat is running, and you know he's moving. Well, how do you know he's moving? You're comparing him to something. Maybe you're comparing him to the door, or maybe you're comparing him to the cabinet behind here. Or maybe this crack in the floor you're comparing him to. But you see him moving from one side to the other, so you know that he is moving. So those are reference points. So maybe the cabinet is your reference point, or the door is a reference point, or this crack is a reference point. It's whatever you compare the object to to see that there's movement. On this little cartoon here, you see this guy, Barry. Um, he walks across the floor, and it says there's lots of reference points. You could tell he was moving maybe based on the sink or the mirror or the toilet or the bathtub. So somehow you knew that he was moving uh, compared to the reference point. Now, all these examples had the reference points standing still. See, none of these things are moving, none of these things were moving. Could a reference point be moving? Sure, a reference point does not have to be standing still. For example, maybe I'm uh, running next to the cat, and the cat races by me, and someone can see that the cat is moving faster than me, so they're comparing him to me. Okay, I can be moving. Or maybe you pass a car on the street and you're moving faster and somebody can see that you are moving faster because you're comparing to the other car that's moving. Okay, so the reference point can move. Um, it doesn't have to be standing still. You may have had the experience where you were in an airplane or one of those big coach buses and the kind of the kind of that floaty, that kind of shaking feeling, the air conditioning's running and the fans are blowing, and then you see something out the window moving, maybe another bus or an airplane and you can't tell whether it's going forward or you're going backwards, and it's kind of an uneasy feeling. And it's because you don't have that reference point to compare it to. You don't know which is moving, you or it. If you had a reference point, you could easily know if you know, you're the one's going forward or the other one's going backwards or whatever the case is. Okay, so that's how we know that there's movement. We're just comparing something to a reference point. Now let's get on to our actual lesson of speed and velocity and the difference between them. Now speed. A lot of you know what speed is already. You've already calculated it too, so we're going to go through this fairly quickly. Speed is just the distance traveled by an object divided by the time taken to travel that distance. Okay, so it's distance divided by the time taken to travel that distance. So units, well, it's going to be a distance measurement over a time measurement. So for example, it might be meters per second. Or maybe it'll be kilometers per hour or something like that. So maybe it'll be like kilometers or kilometers per hour or something similar to that. It's just going to be a distance measurement over a time measurement. It's pretty easy. So let's do a couple um, examples. What we're going to calculate is we're going to calculate average speed. And I'll show you an example on the next slide. There's going to be a graph that I'll explain kind of the difference between average and instantaneous. But we're going to be talking about average speed. So it says most objects do not travel at a constant speed. To find the average speed, just divide total distance by total time. So your formula, speed equals distance divided by time. For example, my cat ran 40 meters in 5 seconds. So we just do it. Speed equals distance divided by time. So speed equals, what was my distance? 40 meters divided by my time, 5 seconds. Calculate it out. You can do it in your head. Or use your calculator. 40 divided by 5, we get 8. Now, what's the unit label going to be? Well, in the problem, we had meters per second. Remember, we have a distance over a time. So we're going to have 8 meters, oops, 8 meters per second. We just use that as our unit label. Now, we need to check significant digits, of course. We always need to check our significant digits. Let me uh, do a little check here, see a different color. So 40 had one significant digit. Remember, the zero didn't count because it was to the right of the number, but not to the right of the decimal point. It's just a placeholder. 
and the number five is one digit. So our answer can only have one digit, because we're looking up only one. So we look at number eight, and it has only one digit, so we're good. So we have eight meters per second. So we get my color back. So we'll circle that. So that's our answer, eight meters per second. Let's do another example. These ones are from page six of your book. Kira jogs to a store 72 meters away in 36 seconds. What's her average speed? So again, speed equals distance divided by time. So speed equals the distance of 72 meters divided by the time of 36 seconds. Divide that, we have two. Check for a significant digit again. 72 this time has two. I'll keep the same color. So two. 36 has two, so that means our answer has to have two. But the number two only has one. So let's get a little bit more accurate. I think 2.0. So now that zero counts because it's to the right of the decimal and to the right of a number. My unit label. meters per second. We'll circle it. So my answer is 2 meters per second, or 2.0 meters per second. Try this one here. If you travel 7.5 kilometers in one and a half hours, what is the average speed? So again, we do speed equals distance divided by time. So speed equals 7.5 kilometers divided by 1.5 hours. So that will you divide that out, and you get 5 kilometers per hour. Again, we check our unit lay or our significant digits. 7.5 is 2. 1.5 is 2, so our answer has to have two digits. So this will be, again, 5.0. My unit label will be the distance, kilometers, over the time, hours. So we have 5.0 kilometers per hour. Looking at this graph, we you can start to see what I was talking about with the difference between average and actual speed. So we see this is a car, let's say driving, and started at zero distance and it drove for the first hour. How far did it drive, drive in the first hour? Take a look at it, it goes from that to about 90 kilometers it looks like in one hour. So your speed, distance divided by time, so it would be about 90 kilometers per hour. So it went 90 kilometers in one hour. Okay, so now we're looking at the blue one again. It went from about 90 kilometers up to about, let's say, 210. So it's a 90 and 210, so that's 120 kilometers in the second hour. So that it went 120 kilometers per hour in the second hour. It sped up. If we look at the blue line here, it looks like it's slowing down a little bit again. So it goes from about you know 210 kilometers here to about 300 kilometers here. So that's back to 90 kilometers per hour. So you can see that car did not keep a constant speed for its whole trip. You can see and then it slowed down a little bit more here, it looks like. Um, so the red line is going to show the average. It went zero distance all the way to about uh, 360, looks like 360 up here in four hours. So speed equals distance divided by time. So we have 360 divided by four hours. So let's go to kilometers per hours, which gives you 90 kilometers per hour for an average. Okay, so that's that average speed formula is showing you. Okay, it wasn't constantly going 90 miles per hour, it was going slower and faster and slower, but it averaged out to 90 kilometers per hour. So that's what that that's what that formula is trying to show you. Now we're moving on to velocity. And there's a little bit of a difference, but not that much. It says, imagine that two birds leave the same tree at the same time. They both fly at 10 kilometers per hour for five minutes, 12 kilometers per hour for eight minutes, and five kilometers per hour for 10 minutes. Why don't they end up at the same place? Good question. They're going the same speed, but maybe they're going different directions. Okay, so direction matters for velocity. 
So velocity is just the speed of an object in a certain direction. So you see your formula for velocity. It's just distance divided by time, just like speed was. But now we have to add a direction to it. Okay, it's speed in a certain direction. So same formula we just had. So if you can do the speed formula, you can do velocity. Just don't forget to add a direction. So we're going to do some examples. A bus travels 20 kilometers south in two hours. What's the velocity? So again, velocity equals distance divided by time. So velocity equals 20 kilometers over two hours. That will give us 10 kilometers per hour. Check our sticks and digits. 20 had one, the zero doesn't count because it wasn't filled by decimal. So the two has one. Our answer, 10, has only one significant digit. The zero is to the right of the, de of the number, but not to the decimal. It's just a placeholder. And now we have to get our direction south. So there's our answer now. Okay, so it's just like speed, but the difference is I have the direction added. So 10 kilometers per hour south. Again, so fairly simple. If you can do speed, you can do velocity. So velocity depends on both speed and direction. So velocity is constant only if both do not change. A change in either will change velocity. So does the velocity of the bus change if it continues to travel at 10 kilometers per hour but turns right? So the speed stays the same. It's going 10 kilometers, but now it's turning right. So does the velocity change? Yes. The velocity changes because the direction changed. Let's do another velocity example. President Clinton, he used to be a big jogger. He jogged eight kilometers north in two hours. What is his velocity? So again, velocity equals distance divided by time. So velocity equals eight kilometers divided by two hours. That will give me four kilometers per hour. And we need, you know, we check speed in digits, one there, one there. My answer has one, perfect. I need my direction north, so four kilometers per hour north is his velocity. Uh, well, you know, since I'm in the U.S. here, I don't really understand kilometers per hour as well as I should probably. So I don't really know how fast four kilometers per hour is. Is that fast? Is that slow? I really don't know. So let's convert that to meters per, se per second so that I have a little bit better understanding of how fast he's going. So we had, you know, again, my, I had four kilometers per hour um, is what I got up here. So let's convert it. Easiest way, there's a couple ways to do it. Easiest way I think to do it is just use your conversion table like we've done before. So do your kind of king, Henry, died Monday, drinking chocolate milk. Go back to the problem, we had eight kilometers. So we had eight kilometers here, which means 80 here. 800, so we have 8,000 meters. Okay, so eight kilometers, the same as 8,000 meters. So we had velocity equals distance divided by time. So velocity equals my 8,000 meters over my time. Well, what is the time in seconds? It was two hours. Okay, so we had two hours. Well, how many seconds is that? That's a lot of seconds, right? Because there are 60 minutes in an hour, and then there are 60 seconds in a minute. So I'm going to multiply two hours times 60 times 60 again, and that gives me it's like 7,200 seconds. So there are 7,200 seconds in two hours. So I'm going to put that down there, 7,200 equals meters, oops, meters, turn right, okay, here's the second. Now I calculate that out, and I get 1.11 repeating. We know significant digit-wise that's not possible. We look at 8,000, there's only one. 7,200 is two. So I go with the lowest of my significant digits, and I'm going to round 1.11 repeating to one. My unit label now is meters per second, and my direction is still north. 
So there is his velocity in meters per second, one meter per second north. Okay, now I have a better understanding of what that is. Okay, it's one meter stick every second. Okay, I guess not too fast, not too slow. Okay, one meter stick every second. Let's do another example. Uh, tie it into our astronomy unit a little bit here. The moon is 386,000 kilometers from Earth. In 1969, Apollo 11 traveled that distance in 50 hours. What was the average velocity of Apollo 11? So again, we have our formula. Velocity equals distance divided by time. So the distance was 386,000 kilometers over the time, which was 50 hours. Divide that out, and you get, what do we get? It looks like 7,720 kilometers per hour. Uh, check significant digits. I have three significant digits here, and I have one here, so I'm going to go with one. So that's going to round to eight thousand kilometers per hour. Remember for velocity I have to have a direction so I'm just going to say moonwards or up. So I'm going to put an error there. Okay. So the Apollo 11 had an average speed to the moon of 8,000 kilometers per hour. That seems like it's pretty fast. Again let's put it into meters per second to kind of compare it to how fast President Clinton was jogging. I'm sure this is quite a bit faster but let's see how fast it was. Again, I'm just going to do it kind of the way I think is simple. My King Henry died one day drinking chocolate milk. I had 386,000 here, so I'm going to move the decimal place one, oops, one, two, three places. So I have 386,000. I'm going to add one, two, three more zeros because I moved it three decimal places to the right. Dividing by my time, so 50 hours times 60 times 60 is, how much is that? 180,000 seconds, a lot of seconds. 180,000 seconds, or meters per second. Divide that out, and I get 2,144 meters per second. We know we have to round that by significant digits. Again, we have three digits here. Actually, we'll go back to our problem. We have three digits and one digit from 50. So I'm allowed to have one digit, so that'll be 2,000 meters per second towards the moon. So quite a bit faster than uh, President Clinton was jogging. He was going average 2,000 meters per second instead of one meter per second. Um, so that's how you calculate speed and velocity like this. It's the same formula. You just take whatever distance the object went and divide it by the time it took that object to go that distance. If it's velocity, then you have to make sure that you have your direction also with it. Otherwise, it's just speed. So speed with direction is velocity. Um, that's the main part of the, of the lesson today. Uh, I have a, I'll have a short little one where we talk about combining velocities, but I'm going to do that on a separate one to because um, it's a little bit different unit or a little different section. Uh, we'll do it at a different time. Um, so that's where we're ending with this now. Thank you.